So thank you very much for um, inviting me today. And I'm honored to be here and have your association. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love, I have been to Birmingham, I think in the past once or twice, and uh, I hope in the future we'll get further opportunities um, <clears throat> to, you know, to associate together, but th this will have to do for now. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've got a bit of a presentation here about household life. Um, so this is my plan. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get some involvement, um, you know, from yourselves. And um, what I'll do is because uh, I'd like to um, ask you to contribute. And I'm going to put up slides um, with quotations from Srila Prabhupada and ask, um, invite uh, the audience um, yourselves to, um, you know, uh, tell me what you understand him to be saying, and we can discuss these points as we go through. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with Zoom, but if you do want to say something, please remember to unmute your mic, because <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you think you're contributing, no one can hear you. So I'm sure you're probably everyone in the world is an expert at Zoom now. Um, <laughs> I know I've, <laughs> my, my, uh, um, knowledge of Zoom has increased considerably in these last few months. All right, so um, I'm just going to start with an Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, um, and uh, then we can kick off with the presentation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya Avayana Timirandasya Jananjana Shalakaya Chakarum Militam Yena Tasma Shi Guru Vena Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shia Dvaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gopaka Vinda Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari So um, yes, household life, heaven or hell or perhaps a bit of both. <laughs> um, the importance of Grihastha Ashram and the importance of making it work uh, is the subject today. So um, I'd like to ask um, anyone, uh, what would you say is the purpose of the Grihastha Ashram? Would anyone like to put forward any suggestions? <laughs> And remember, if you want to say something, unmute your microphone. I'm sure there's many householders among us. And um, why, why did you get married? What is the purpose of this ashram? Can you tell me? Can anyone tell me? I don't know if anyone's speaking. But I can't hear anything. I don't know who's here, to be honest. We have some uh, suggestions in the chat box. Uh, ah, the, the chat box. Okay, let me see if I can find that. Okay. Uh, I'm not in Zoom. I'm in. Um, I am in. Uh, okay, let's see. Annotate. I'm in PowerPoint. I can't see the chat box. Tell me where it is, Prabhu. Okay, I, I can read them out for now if you like, Prabhu. That'd be easier. Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay, so this is from Joe. Uh, it says, to bring up Krishna conscious children. Okay, to raise Krishna conscious children. Yes, that's very good. And then we have yeah. another one from Ami. To serve others and facilitate the other orders with money. <laughs> So give charity to serve others and, and give charity. Right, right. Yes, these are very important things. Uh, another? Yeah, this one more. To harness the love of God. Harness the love of God. Wow. Yes, that's, that's great. That's also very important. <laughs> this is so awesome. So Shil, we have Maipo Prabhu says to take each other home back to Godhead. To take each other back to Godhead, each other. I like that. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any others? Is that it? That's it for now, bro. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so, so here is a, a famous household couple. I'm sure some of you will recognize Kashyapa and Ditti. Um, and of course, uh, Ditti is the mother of the Deitches, the demons. <laughs> um, and there's an episode in Third Canto. Some of you uh, will be familiar with that. It was in our book, um, Vidura's Pilgrimage. Uh, we, we wrote this section um, leading up to the appearance of Lord Varaha Dave and um, different things like that. So um, I'm going to read a bit from this section of the Bhagavatam, um, the uh, purports that Srila Prabhupada wrote, because um, this is an, a very instructive section uh, for household life. Um, there's some very nice instructions from Prabhupada. So let's take a look at one. So this is what Prabhupada says is the purpose of household life. Marriage is actually a duty performed in mutual cooperation as directed in the authoritative scriptures for spiritual advancement. Therefore, marriage is essential in order to avoid the life of cats and dogs who are not meant for spiritual advancement. So what does anyone understand that to be saying? How would you put that in your own words, either in the chat box or you can speak as well if you like. Don't be shy. This is something I just like mention quickly that um, we also um, we like to teach in um, myself and my wife and uh, perhaps a few of you know about this that um, the process of um discussing shastra um and it involves uh first of all understanding what Srila Prabhupada has said because many times we we read through the books um and we don't always assimilate uh the meaning we don't always capture Prabhupada's meaning so when we discuss together uh it's much more easy and possible to do that because we take turns in trying to deeply understand what Prabhupada's saying, putting it in our own words. Not like, for example, here, I'm just going to give you a little example. Not, not that we would say, well, uh, so I think what, what Prabhupada's saying is that marriage is um, it's like a duty uh, and, and we, we cooperate um, together as according to the scriptures. And then that way we make advancement. So in other words, we just completely use the same words that Prabhupada has used. So, um, to make us really engage with this uh, and think about it deeply, um, you paraphrase. Prabhupada said that, in fact, I, I want you to paraphrase my purports, put them in your own words. Because by doing that, we actually um, deeply engage with the subject and, and think about it, uh, about what he's saying. So that's the first step in the discussion process. And then we reflect it back to each other. So if anyone would like to, um, put something in their own words, what Prabhupada's saying here, um, and then I can try and reflect it back. Uh, yes, now I found the chat box. Does anyone, you can type it in the chat box if you want. Samantha C, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for doing today's class. Um, I think just from reading this here, actually, it says here the authoritative scriptures. I think it's important to also understand what the authoritative scriptures are for us, you know, because there's different Puranas and the, there's different activities that you can perform, you know, like there's like Karma Kanda activities as well. So, for, you know, for us, it's the Srimad Bhagavatam, the, uh, you know, the, the Vedanta Shruti, um, Vedanta Shruti, um, the commentary, you know, which has been written by um, <clears throat> Yes, there. So, um, yes, important to understand what the authority of scriptures are in the first place to make spiritual advancement, because we can be following another scripture, and in the end, we could be doing karma Kanda activities. So I thought I'd just say that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, what was your name, Prabhu? Is Vishal Vishal Vishal? Thank you, Vishal Prabhu. Um, yes, okay, you've made a really nice point. Um, 
you know, you're saying, well, what does it mean by authoritative scriptures? That's actually a response to what Prabhupada is saying. Um, it's not so much an understanding, um, although I suppose you could put it as an understanding, but uh, you, 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 um, you know, it, it would be more a case of, well, what does he mean by authoritative scriptures? Because once we've understood what he's saying, we then um, respond by asking questions. Do we have doubts? Do we have confusions? Do we have insights? Does it tell us anything? That, you know, how would we apply this? What does it mean to me? Why did Prabhupada say this in, to me? What does he want me to do as a result of knowing this? Um, these are the responses. The, the initial understanding is sort of like, okay, Prabhupada is saying um, that we have to work together in marriage. Uh, when we get married, the husband and wife um, are working together and it's according to the directions of Shastra. Um, if they, you know, it's not like uh, a speculative endeavor. Um, and, and what's the whole point of it? So that both of them can make progress uh, in their spiritual lives. That's what I understand the first sentence to be saying. So then a response might be, what does he mean by authoritative scriptures? Or you could include that in your understanding. You could say, as directed in authoritative scriptures, I understand that to mean the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and whatever you know so just um i'm just because one of the things i would like to get across in this little session is um is the the process and the practice of um of a good discussing good discussion techniques you know so um it's critical when we do this when we're together that we start by understanding Prabhupada. what does he actually mean um so that's my understanding of the first sentence. There's, there's, there's a bit more. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say on that? Any, um, in, any understandings of what Prabhupada is saying? Hare Krishna Prabhu, it's Narayan Keshav here. Hi, Bhaji. So, Danny Prabhu was mentioning that uh, it's essential in order to avoid the life of cats and dogs. Mm. Uh, I mean, partly that's to do with uh, you know illicit sex, I guess. You know, people are going off without any. Uh, you know, meaningful relationships, again, all sorts of relationships, and uh, has no meaning, has no advancement in, in any way. Uh, there's no control, there's no proper commitment, so that kind of thing. So it's okay. a, marriage is an institution where you can commit and help each other in many ways. Okay, yes, thank you. So he's saying, are you picking up on the point that Prabhupada says the life of cat to avoid the life of cats and dogs, and um, you're understanding that, you know, that people don't have any... Um, you know, you know, these days it's it's illicit sex. There's a lot of uh, free so-called sex going on, and um, and Prabhupada say obviously that's not um, not helpful. Um, and uh, marriage is there to prevent that and to ensure that uh, we can make some advancement. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Samantha and Bishal. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Prabhuji. Thank you so much uh, for clarification for the first sentence. Um, so this here, the second context, you know, like Prabhu was saying, of avoiding the life of cats and dogs. So we can also think, <clears throat> so from my understanding is life of cats and dogs is, is, are the lower modes as well, you know? So if we, if we live in the lower modes, it says in the Bhagavad Gita that we'll go into lower species of life as well. So it's important in marriage to be um, avoiding the lower modes of, of, of material nature, um, which are not meant for spiritual enlightenment because also in the scriptures, it says that, you know, we can't get spiritual enlightenment if we're not in the, the higher modes, like from goodness um, and, and, you know, trying to reach Sudha Sattva. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, thank you. So he's saying um, the life of cats and dogs also says to you uh, the lower modes of nature because animals are in the mode of ignorance. So, um, it, you know, in order to keep ourselves in the mode of goodness, um, we, we get married, we accept Grihasta Ashram. Uh, and in that way, we won't descend into Tamagoon um, like the animals. <laughs> uh, that's what I understood you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, thank you. Um, so that brings us nicely onto the next slide, which I shall now um, bring up. So um, now this is still from the same section of Kashyapa and Diti. Uh, and this is the verse, as a fort commander very easily conquers invading plunderers 
by taking shelter of a wife, one can conquer the senses, which are unconquerable in the other social orders. Purport. Of the four orders of human society, the householder is on the safe side. The bodily senses are considered plunderers of the fort of the body. The wife is supposed to be the commander of the fort. <laughs> there you go. She's in charge. And therefore, whenever there is an attack on the body by the senses, it is the wife who protects the body from being smashed. The sex demand is inevitable for everyone. But one who has a fixed wife is saved from the onslaught of the sense enemies. A man who possesses a good wife does not create a disturbance in society by corrupting virgin girls. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> Would anyone like to understand? Um, uh, maybe, the, you know, the gist of what Prabhupada's saying, what the verse is saying, uh, in your own words. Uh, please feel free to speak up. How many have we got with us today? Does anyone know? Uh, about 39 people, 40 altogether, all of us. And we also have Facebook going on live as well. Okay, that's really nice. So, yeah, anyone like to contribute? There's 40 of you there, so I'm sure some of you must have some thoughts on this. What does this mean? Hello? Chakradari. Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you for reading that purport. So um, my um, uh, understanding is that um, my, my reflection and realization is that um, um, as Prabhupada says here that the bodily demand um, uh, of genitals is so strong um, and what um, uh, I guess Prabhupada is saying is here is that um, instead of for those who can't control it um, instead of corrupting the society uh, by resorting to prostitution or that's what um, obviously Prabhupada means by uh, corrupting virgin girls here um, the it is a um, uh, a wife is like a fortress, as you said, as Prabhupada says. You know, it's uh, uh, obviously you know it's 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 a, a topic that uh, is, can be debated can be debated a lot, especially in these con circles. Um, but it, it is a strong um, uh, pillar and strong foundation for controlling uh, and dovetailing the that aspect of sensual pleasure that's what my understanding is okay yes you're saying um <clears throat> we're only covered saying this is to avoid uh, prostitution the, the, you know the the wife is um <clears throat> protecting the fortress of the body um otherwise um and you know the senses will go out of control a man will simply um seek out prostitutes will corrupt girls that's what you understand by that you know that there will be prostitution taking place and the proper marriage um, prevents that. Yes, and also, of course, we know that even within marriage, there, and we are aware of rules and it's not a free license for, um, you know, um, unrestricted um, mm. essential pleasure either, but at mm. least that's better if you have a, you know, if on a spectrum of one end of uh, one who has complete control to other end of uh, you know complete debauchery and prostitution uh, on the other end of spectrum, um, then you know this puts us firmly mm -hmm. to the side of the um, control spectrum. If you see what I mean. Sure. So you're saying uh, <clears throat> even in householder life, it's not that there is a free license to enjoy unlimited sex life. Um, there has to be control even within household mm -hmm. life. But um, it's certainly uh, an improvement from, you know, a, a big improvement from the, the life of uh, illicit sex um, of like, you know, bachelors and whatever that uh, we see nowadays. And um, uh, but still, uh, you're pointing out that in, in householder life, there are rules and regulations that we have to follow. And um, yes, thank you, Prabhu. That's a good point. Um, of course, it starts. I mean, the first thing is get married 
and then um, and stay within marriage, don't have illicit sex outside of marriage. That's step one. <clears throat> and then you've got to start getting step two, step three together, <laughs> step four, uh, to the point where once a month only for the procreation of children, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the high standard that we're aspiring to reach. And I think you were probably alluding to that. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you sir. Um, yeah, any, anything anyone else would like to say? in terms of uh, understanding here. Um, I think uh, one thing I'd like to point out when uh, Prabhupada talked about um, the man, um, you know, uh, and uh, the woman, uh, he would sometimes say when it says man in Shastra, it also means woman. So, um, you know, the, the wife is uh, protecting the husband and it's working both ways, you know, so. Um, because uh, earlier in the um, the previous slide, uh, I had the uh, quotation that marriage is a duty performed in mutual cooperation. And I'm, I want to come back to that mutual cooperation point in due course. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a two way street. Um, and um, uh, a sex demand is inevitable, but one who has a fixed wife is safe from the onslaught. A man who possesses a good wife does not create a disturbance by corrupting virgin girls. So, um, yeah, women need protection. This is another point that uh, I see coming out of this, that they can be corrupted. Um, but the problem is um, not so much the, the girls, the women, but the um, men, the licentious men who, you know, low class men um, in, in the uh, Bhagavad Gita this point is made if you uh, see in the first chapter of the Gita um, the verse Adharma Bibivat Krishna Pradushanti Kulastriya Strishu Dushtasu Vashnaya Jayate Vana Sankara that um, that uh, women become corrupted in society by men uh, who are um, you know very low class men so that's the whole point of uh, a woman need, requiring protection to prevent that from happening and to prevent um, Vana Sankara. And Vana Sankara means unwanted children. And that doesn't mean, well, I mean, it can't mean obviously unwanted in the sense that they're killing them in abortions and that kind of thing. But what it really means is they're unwanted in human society. Um, that the Vana Sankara, the, the cross mixture of, you know, different. Um, orders of life and everything and um, people who have no uh, religious principles, no training or anything like that um, are a big disturbance in society. So when Prabhupada uses the term unwanted, he means unwanted by society as, as a whole, not so much by the parents because I mean parents may want their children, their Vana Sankara children um, and may love them and everything but um, but they, they, you know, they go on to create disturbances in society. Anyway, that's a separate topic, perhaps for another class on another day. But um, that sort of comes out of this, uh, this particular point here. Um, does anyone have anything else they'd like to say or, or on this particular um, purport and uh, verse? I think uh, Vishal had his hand up. He's just put it down. I don't know whether he wants to say. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Vishal? No, probably it was, it was from before. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Uh, so let's move on. Um, so, without a fixed wife, a man becomes a debauchee of the first order and is a nuisance in society, unless he is a trained brahmachari, vanaprastha, or sannyasi. Unless there is rigid and systematic training of the brahmachari by the expert spiritual master, and unless the student is obedient, it is sure that the so-called brahmachari will fall prey to the attack of sex. A grihasta is saved, however, because of his faithful wife. Sex life is the cause of material bondage, and therefore it is prohibited in three ashrams and is allowed only in the grihasta ashram. The grihasta is responsible for producing first quality brahmacharis, vanaprastas, and sannyasis. So yeah, this is again all from the same section here, um, <clears throat> chapter 14 of the third canto. So anyone like to have a go at understanding here, whatever points you see Prabhupada making?
don't be shy. I know there's a lot of you out there. I'm sure you've all got uh, thoughts on this. <laughs> One of the uh, the missions of myself and my wife change the culture, get it more involved, get more involvement. Prabhu, uh, Chakradari, is it Chakradari? Yes, Prabhu. Did you want to say something? Is that okay, Prabhu? Uh, is that, unless someone else wants to. No, absolutely okay. Please go ahead. I was just reflecting on how, um, you know, uh, Prabhupada says Brahmacharis and how student uh, being obedient and it's just a reflection of the current modern education system wherein um, I think and Prabhupada said himself that the universities are really the uh, what do you say nectar of uh, instruction yes. uh, uh, sentence of nations that's what Prabhupada uh, uses the word isn't it? in that in, in, in um, nectar of instruction I believe um, or Ishopanishad can't remember now I believe it's in Shopanishad. So I'm just wondering how how um, how far we've gone from the standard of uh, you know uh, uh, when one leads their youth um, in obedience and in in systematic training. They have a training and rigid training. How easy it becomes then <clears throat> moving on uh, to be a krasta to um, to live up to the um, ideals of being a both a faithful husband and a faithful wife. Okay. So you started by mentioning the um, nectar of instruction, you said, or not sure if you um, use but uh, Prabhupada states basically um, that universities are centers of nations. Is that what you said? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. Um, and that the function, um, you're saying, you know, if it trains people um, in this, uh, like brahmachari in, in the standards of brahmachari then it will produce and uh, girls also trains them um, preparing them for uh, household life it, it will um, make for a much better situation with the ashram with the grihasta ashram um, was that what you were saying your understanding yes Prabhu. yes thank you very much yes uh, i see that he's saying the same thing anyone else would like to say anything? There's some good points here. One of the things he's saying is it's certain um, if there's not training, uh, the you know one will fall down, and um, it is sure that the so-called brahmacharya will fall prey to the attack of sex, and. Um, I remember in one class Prabhupada saying that uh, unless one is trained from the age of five in brahmacharya, it's not possible to maintain it in one's life. Um, this is a very good point because um, especially now children are not trained uh, to see every woman as their mother. Um, and, you know, this is critical that right from the start you view uh, other women who, you know, you're not marrying, you're not except your own wife. Um, as your mother, um, but the, you know the paradigm is set by the time you're 16, 18. You know you've gone been through school and everything, um, and that, that's the last thing you see as in terms of other other women. You know, as your mother, Prabhu, Chakradari Prabhu. So, so Prabhu, I just want to know there are some um, comments in the chat. I don't know whether you have access to the. Oh chat yes, I do have access to the chat. Yes, let me. Thank just you. I thought it might be useful. Thank you. Uh, that's kind of you. Thank you for telling me. Um, a fixed wife, my understanding is a man should only have one partner and be committed to them. Yes. Uh, correct. Yes. Ekapatni Vrata. That's our <laughs> that's our standard. And that's a good point. I mean, the, you know, there are there's mention in the books, of course, of uh, more, having more than one wife. Um, but that wasn't encouraged by Prabhupada at all. Um, and that's another story. Perhaps we can talk about that some other time. Um, and only through the sanctity of a form, this is from Kiran, uh, of a formal arrangement of marriage and discipline inherent within allows for the creation of qualitative progeny. Yes. Thank you, Kiran. Yes, that's true. Uh, that there has to be um, a sanctified marriage 
and discipline, and then we can get good uh, children, good progeny. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of other things I'd like to mention in connection with this is uh, in the Mahabharata, um, uh, Bhishma speaking to um, Yudhisthira uh, in the, um, his instructions at, at the end when he was on the bed of arrows, he spoke for a long time, 56 days. He gave a lot of instructions. Uh, and one of them was about Grihastha Ashram. And he said that um, the great sages once took a set of scales uh, and they weighed the Grihastha Ashram against the other three and they found that it was heavier. That, <laughs> because the Grihastha Ashram um, is, as someone earlier mentioned, and as again um, uh, mentioned, I think we'll see actually another, another um, a statement about that in a second, uh, is looking after all the others. And it's not just that they're looking after the others, but um, they're responsible. You see this last sentence, they're responsible for producing first quality brahmacharis, vanaprastas, and sannyasis. So out of the Grihasta ashram, all the, all the other three ashrams, they come. Um, the brahmacharis come from Grihasta, the Vanaprastas come from Grihasta, and the sannyasis um, also. So the Grihastas have a very, um, very important, they're foundational to good Vedic society. Um, and uh, we can't underestimate the importance, or overestimate rather, the importance of the, uh, of the household ashram. So let's uh, let's move on. So um, in household of life, man is protected by the wife. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, the other. So let's have a look. This is uh, a little bit more from this section. The three perfections of liberation are religiosity, economic development and sense gratification. For a conditioned soul, the wife is considered to be the source of liberation because she offers her service to the husband for his ultimate liberation. Conditional material existence is based on sense gratification. And if someone has the good fortune to get a good wife, he is helped by the wife in all respects. If one is disturbed in his conditional life, he becomes more and more entangled in material contamination. So yeah, anyone like to say anything on this one? Yes, Prabhu, Narayan Keshavya. Ah, so, I was going to ask this question later on, but I think it applies here, so I can ask it now. Uh, this concept of uh, in the Shemir Bhagavatam, we see so many examples where the wives help the husbands to advance, or the one prestigious wife went along and then the wife supported the husband. Examples are King Yati, Devyani, or Shobri Muni and his 50 wives, or the wives especially with Shobari Muni, it's mentioned that the wives weren't really qualified to go back to Godhead, but they did on the power of Shobari Muni. He took them back. So, I mean, my question would be, does that system still apply that the wife helps the husband to advance and then she can go back? Or is the system changed? If it does apply, or then are the wives happy to do that? Are they happy to follow the husband? Or they want to be, you know, equal <laughs> side by side and they're not prepared to follow him. Ah. How is it? I hear your wife laughing there. In the background. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So you're asking a question, you're saying, um, you know, we see how, um, the, you know, great personalities, great husbands liberate their wives. Um, and, um, and there's an example, we said of Shobri Muni, and he married all those girls, uh, and they weren't particularly qualified. Um, but still, you know, by, by his um, potency, they were liberated. Um, and, uh, you know, we often find that's the case, that uh, Kardama, Devahuti, um, and Kashyapa here in Diti, the, the, the husband is elevating the wife. Um, and you're saying the mood these days is more, let's uh, be equals. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. can they, does it still apply that the man should be... Um, you know, that he can liberate his wife. Uh, yeah, did you want to say anything else? Uh, 
now on this on this uh, part yeah i think that's that's all i needed to know the, i mean what if the wives do want to be that then what happens i mean okay well we're going to come or, to the other way around say the wife yeah. is elevating the husband what then and I, does that happen can the wife elevate the husband okay this is a good question too um so yeah we're going to come to that so let's move on and then uh, see if we can uh, tackle that question um so the next point here is what is the husband's duty so we're kind of coming to that so let's look at this next because we always hear like the women have to do this that and the other and they're probably thinking oh well, what about the husband you know he's got to do something <laughs> and he has he's got to do something um so let's let's see what anyone thinks what what would you say what would anyone say is the um the duty of a husband uh, and i hope we get some answers here otherwise your, <laughs> your wives are going to be a bit annoyed if you don't know what your duty is Hare Krishna, the oh, husband, husband duty is to protect the wife and if they have children to guide them to uh, Krishna consciousness. Okay, so to protect the wife and to um, guide the children, teach the children, yes? Hare yes, Krishna. Pra Hare Krishna, please. It's, it's Raju Lakshmi here, Prabhu Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisances. Um, uh, uh, I think husband is like the guru for the uh, or for the wife and for the children. He is whole and soul responsible for leading them on the right spiritual path and making sure that everyone uh, attains the uh, purpose that is to become Krishna conscious. And I've also read somewhere that husband takes part of the sins that are committed by the family members. That is because he's and then he's responsible for the actions of the family members. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry, your name again, please? Raju Lakshmi. Ah, Raju Lakshmi, thank you. Yes, you're saying uh, the husband is the guru. Uh, he has the responsibility for wife and children um, to uplift them in spiritual life. Uh, and so much so that he must even accept uh, some of their um, uh, karma. Yes. Thank you very much. That's a very nice point. Thank you. Um, and we're going to come to that as well. And, and Kiran has added that we, uh, to uphold Dharmic principles, the duty of the husband, um, which is also true, of course, uh, to maintain Dharmic principles. And um, yes, yeah, so of course, protection doesn't just mean um, material protection, it means spiritual protection. Um, as Raja Lakshmi just said, uh, uh, Lakshmi just said, and that includes um, actually, you know, teaching. And we're going to um, speak a little bit more about that shortly. Uh, anyone have anything else they want to add before we sort of move on here? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, it's Radharani here. Hare Krishna Radharani, Mataji. Vandamai uh, Dandavats to you Prabhuji. Thank you for very uh, insightful topic today thank you yes the husband uh, has to be a very good role model not just to the wife to the children and to his extended family and mm -hmm. to his professional circle also if he's the uh, if he thinks that he's uh, responsible for you know uh, grista like we say Prabhupada ex explains again and again the grista is responsible for the brahmacharis the one plus uh, the sannyasis and uh, the other one prasthas. so a husband's uh, uh, duty is of a paramount uh, importance so he has to be very very careful in his uh, dealings uh, in all the spheres of his life mm. okay thank you yes you're saying that um, the husband must be a role model um, that he must set a very good example uh, for his own family, for his wife, for his children, for the extended family, uh, and um, beyond even um, in um, you know the workplace, perhaps uh, in, in all spheres of his life. Uh, it's important that he um, he sets a good uh, Krishna conscious, I presume, example. D did I understand you? Yes, Prabhuji, you are absolutely right. Thank you very much. These are very nice points. Thank you. Um, we've got one from uh, Natalie. Make sure the wife gets all her basic needs to keep her happy. Uh, and, the wi and when the wife is happy, the house will be happy. Yes, this is a very good point too. 
uh, he, this has also been stated by Bhishma to uh, Yudhisthira that uh, those homes where uh, women are not cherished uh, and where they suffer uh, are, are completely destroyed. Um, but where those homes where the women are, uh, are cherished and protected uh, and happy, um, the goddess of Lakshmi resides there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's such an important thing um, to ensure that the, the women and the wives are very nicely taken care of in all respects. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Have you ever seen this? <laughs> the man and the woman's duty. The man works from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. <laughs> the woman's always, the man goes out and comes back. I mean, it's tough these days, you know, commute and everything, but the, uh, the woman's often, you know, even when the man is kind of resting, she's doing the laundry and the washing up and <laughs> looking after the kids and cleaning and gosh, no, who knows what. So it's, a, it's got to be kind of, we work together on this one. All right, so now here's uh, a bit more from a purport. Um, the man who lives with a wife has a great responsibility in maintaining the members of the other social orders, the brahmacharis, varnaprastas, and sannyasis. Except for the grihastas or the householders, everyone is supposed to engage in the spiritual advancement of life. And therefore, the brahmachari, the varnaprastha, and the sannyasi have very little time to earn a livelihood. By helping the other three sections of society cultivate spiritual values, the householder also makes advancement in spiritual life. Ultimately, every member of society automatically becomes spiritually advanced and easily crosses the ocean of nescience. So any points anyone would like to pick up from that one? Yeah, Prabhu, I can say, and Ryan Keshavya, that uh, if the other, uh, if, if the other uh, orders are getting advanced, uh, then, then they are, they're helping society, they're helping the Grestas uh, advance as well, aren't they? This is what they're, they're doing, uh, especially the sannyasis uh, who travel and they help the Grestas advance. Mm. So, you know, they're supporting each other, basically. Right, right. Thank you. So yes, you're saying right, with that um, uh, the householders by uh, supporting um, the other three orders of life, especially sannyasis, who are the preachers, of course, um, they themselves uh, Benefit. are benefited spiritually. Yeah, and this is what Prabhupada's saying, isn't he? By helping the other three sections of society cultivate spiritual values, the householder also makes advancement. So, and interestingly, he says, except for the grihastas everyone is supposed to engage in spiritual advancement of life. So Prabhupada's saying that, and that's interesting. Um, and, uh, and what I understand that to mean is that the focus of the other three orders is spiritual progress. Um, and of course, the householder, his focus um, can't be that. Of course, he can't neglect it. Uh, we have to chant our rounds, and as we know, everything. But, um, but the focus is always going to be on um, maintaining, surviving, and but giving charity uh, and supporting the others um, enables us also to make spiritual advancement. Uh, I think we've got another. Someone's made a comment. Educator and liberator for all in the family and promoting interests of society. Yes, thank you. That's from Kiran. Um, any anyone else any points on this little section um, of the purport in the um, seventh canto uh, chapter 14 I think at the beginning um, Srila Prabhupada says every householder is a great communist who provides the means of livelihood for everyone in human society you know, because um, he shares. I mean, actually, Srila Prabhupada said the householder should give 50%. Well, that's obviously a major challenge for most of us. Uh, and I don't know many people who do that. Actually, I did know someone who did that. I've known a couple, actually, in my time. When I was in Manchester, there were a, a very nice couple. Both of them were doctors. 
uh, and they actually gave 50% of their income. I think they were giving it to the Newcastle Temple at the time. Um, and uh, they lived very simply, even though they, they both had high paying jobs. They, they you know, had a simple car, simple house. Uh, and I was uh, in awe of them because, you know, that's not easy. It's very, very difficult. Like Bhishma said to Yudhisthira that um, a man can sacrifice his very life, but to sacrifice his hard earned wealth is harder <laughs> to give. You know, it's difficult to do that. But uh, by doing that, we, we, we make progress in spiritual life, um, actually by helping the other orders of life, uh, by giving charity. So it's a very important uh, principle in, uh, in household life. So let's have a look at another one here. Um, if the husband is progressive in spiritual advancement, the wife undoubtedly shares in his activities and thus both the wife and the husband profit in spiritual perfection. So key point here, anyone like to say anything? Couple of interesting points. Yes, Prabhu. Chakradari Prabhu. I, I, I would say just the uh, um, uh, the whole concept of teamwork. Um, that you know, the uh, husband and wife are uh, um, two uh, 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 important components. The same side, uh, both sides uh, of the same coin, and it's just um, I guess Papa is insisting so much on it's a team effort. Uh, like everything else in life, you know, when when they um, reciprocate and um, when they help each other, identify each other's, um, you know, strengths and weaknesses and complement, then um, I think spiritual perfection is not very far, uh, even though Prabhupada says that, you know, rest us. Uh, the other three ashrams are for spirituality, but as you said, you know, um, we know how important uh, being rest us, our role of um practicing these spiritual practices uh following uh, in the footsteps of so many uh, amazing grasas not least of them is bhakti not Thakur. thank you Prabhu. thank you very much Prabhuji. yes yes you're saying that it's you know together we the husband and wife uh, assist each other and um complement and compensate for each other's weaknesses that kind of thing um and then they can make nice progress in spiritual life towards uh, perfection um yeah, that's that's really nice. Um, anything else, anyone? One thing I, I got from this is that the husband must be progressive himself. Um, Samantha and Bishal, did you have something you wanted to say? No, but I was, going, I was also going to make the same comment. It's in the fact that the husband has to be, or the husband and wife have to be progressive in spiritual life, you know. Yeah. Uh, other activities, not just doing... Um, not just being stagnant because I, I, I heard some, uh, you know, Krishna consciousness is not stagnant, it's progressive. Mm, right. If you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. <laughs> That's right. So, yes, you're saying, you know, you're picking up on this point that the husband must be progressive, both husband and wife. Um, so then, you know, the man has the responsibility to be the leader. Again, that's being said here, isn't it? And, um, and I wanted to just uh, pick up on this point that... Uh, the wife undoubtedly shares in his activities elsewhere. I think there's somewhere where Prabhupada uses the word automatically. So um, I, I'd like to explore that a little bit and, and see um, what that means. Um, someone I think has got a chat. Uh, husband, this is from Parda. Husband starts the deity worship, learning, teaching, and the wife contributes by keeping the, the deity uh, place clean and cooking the offerings. Yes, that's nice. Yeah. Um, a form of cooperation where in the home you have a deity and the husband is um, leading that, worshipping deity and everything, learning, teaching, giving like that. And the wife is providing the, the support structure in keeping everything nice and clean, and making the offerings to the deity. This is nice. Yes. So again, yeah. So let's move on a bit. So now here's another famous, well, this is actually not a couple as such. And uh, some of you may know the painting, this is Lord Kapila. But the, uh, the principle that I want to touch on here um, is the most important duty of the husband is the spiritual, to be the spiritual guide, to be the spiritual teacher. 
So, of course, when Kardama left home, he left the son, um, a very qualified son, because he was the Supreme Lord himself, uh, who then instructed his mother. Um, but the husband should also be doing that. And of course, he did do that. Um, and it's, it's a lifelong commitment that you make. So that commitment can be transferred to a qualified son, um, you know, if, if that's possible. If not, then you can't just leave the woman high and dry. You have to be um, taking good care of her throughout the life. So let's have a look at the um, statement here from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is seminal on this one. One who cannot deliver his dependents from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother, or a worshipable demigod. Purport. Ordinarily, the spiritual master, husband, father, mother, or superior relative accepts worship from an inferior relative. But here, Rishabh Dev forbids this. First, the father, spiritual master, or the husband must be able to release the dependent from repeated birth and death. If he cannot do this, he plunges himself into the ocean of reproachment for his unlawful activities. Everyone should be very responsible and take charge of his dependents, just as a spiritual master takes charge of his disciple or a father takes charge of his son. So this is a really important verse. Anyone like to say anything on this one? Any understandings? Points that you can pick up on this? Prabhuji. Prabhu, I think Samantha has got his, her hand up. Uh, yes, Samantha Vishal. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, Hare. <clears throat> recently, um, I was actually reading about the four orders of life and the different caste systems that I mentioned in the Bhagavatam. And it says that within these caste systems is always glorification, hearing, remembering and worshipping going on. So, for example, here it talks about the responsibilities, you know, of the spiritual master, the husband, father, mother. So it also depends on the reflection. So, it, you know, reflective um, thinking about what you're doing in the ashram, for example, the Grahast ashram, like who you're hearifying, who, who you're glorifying, who you're remembering, who you're worshipping is important because what you're doing, your, your wife will do, your son will do, or for what the wife is doing, the, the children will also do. So, again, it talks about leading by example here. For, for me, that's what I understand. And if you're, if you're glorifying, remembering and hearing appropriately, you know, um, um, Krishna and Guru, then um, that would also lead for, uh, for example, the children um, uh, and the wife to also uh, do those activities. But so I think it's also dependent on realization and reflection on what you're doing in in your ashram itself. Um, so that's what I would also say, Prabhu. Um, thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So you're saying that um, you were reading somewhere recently about how hearing and chanting takes place in in all the different ashrams it should always be going on um, and therefore um, obviously in household ashram uh, if the, um, the 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 husband father uh, is setting a nice example like that that he's engaged in hearing and chanting and worshiping um, then that will be um, a good way to lead others by the example that he sets um, you know, by setting that ethos in the household. Is that what you were saying? Yes, but that's a great summary. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's a very nice point. Um, Prabhu, did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, Prabhu, very quickly. I mean, when I read this verse, I, I'm, I'm engulfed by guilt and a sense of hopelessness because Prabhupada obviously is such a very high standard. Well, I suppose what is high standard for us is probably a uh, basic standard in days gone by or the standard that we need to aim for so perhaps after the maybe end of the class could you just uh, help um, me specifically um, uh, and others who feel similar to me to help to um, how to overcome this feeling of guilt that you know I'm, I'm myself not very advanced how, how on the earth am I going to um, help my dependents okay yeah so you're saying um, this can be perhaps a little um, daunting, the prospect that like Prabhupada says you must uh, take charge and be able to deliver your dependence. And you're thinking, well, I can't deliver myself. 
How about <laughs> never mind my dependence? How am I going to manage that? You know, so you'd like to discuss that a bit more, um, you know, so as not to feel hopeless about the situation. Thank you, Bro. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I think we've got a, a, someone in the chat box. Uh, oh, yeah, someone else has uh, said the same thing. Uh, how does a man do all these things without taking so much mental pressure? There is huge mental health problem in males. Yes, that's a fact. Um, of course, uh, those males mostly are probably not chanting Hare Krishna too many times, so <laughs> that's a problem. But uh, even among devotees, I guess you're seeing it that there may be um, a certain amount of stress uh, there too, uh, and uh, that can be actually um, yes, it, it can it can happen. Uh, well, we're going to move on to um, you know some more practical um, uh, thoughts about how we can do this, how we can discharge this responsibility. As uh, uh, Chakradhari Prabhu was saying, it's a very grave responsibility. So, how can we do that? You know, that, but it can be done. Uh, it's it's not impossible, and we're, and we're going to tackle that in a second. Um, someone's asked, uh, "What if the wife does not follow the husband's instructions?" <laughs> well, I don't know of any wives like that. Do you? <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> well, the thing, is, <laughs> the wife. Um, you know, a leader is someone who has followers. It's not like a leader is a person um, who commands followers. Um, he doesn't demand it. It, it has to be um, that he sets such a nice example. I think this is the key thing um, that naturally the followers will, will want to follow. Um, I, I mean, yes, obviously people have their own independence. They have their own ideas. Uh, and there may be some disagreement. So we're going to come to that as well. Uh, the duty of the wife. I think I better move through because we've only got half an hour. So, um, yeah, these are all good points that you're bringing up here. Uh, and I think I've covered them uh, in the presentation. So let me see. If I haven't covered them by the end, um, please ask again. Um, so here's another statement. It is the duty of the superior to give fearlessness to the subordinate, to take charge of someone, therefore, either as father, mother, spiritual master, relative, or husband, one must accept the responsibility to give his ward freedom from the fearful situation of material existence. So this is the primary duty. Um, yes, Vishal Prabhu? Sorry, Prabhu, that was an accident. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, the primary duty. Does anyone have anything you'd like to say on this particular? Yeah, thing? Prabhu Narayan Keshav here. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're quite right. But uh, as mentioned that even as the, the the leading figure, you are also advancing in stages, you know, you know, like uh, Kapil Muni, uh, you know, you're not uh, uh, the you come with his, with his uh, powers or, you know, you will be advancing by that time. You know, when you think you reach the level that now you can help other people, your children are probably all grown up and they're prepared to listen to what you have to say, you know. So that, that's one point. The other point is that Prabhupada had mentioned this, but Prabhupada also had a problem with his family, you know. He couldn't help his wife, uh, maybe some of his kids. Uh, so, you know, if he, if he can't do it, so how are we expected to, to do that? Okay, very nice point, Narayan Kishpur. Thank you. Yes, you're saying um, we're making progress ourselves. So when we first get married, we may not be at the very high standard of being like a good spiritual master for our wife. We're, <laughs> we're battling with our own mind and senses. Uh, and of course, we're making progress, hopefully. So gradually, as we do that, we, we get to a point where um, we're in a position now to, you know, perhaps be able to give something. But by then, the kids have reached a stage where they're not going to listen to you anymore. <laughs> they become teenagers and older, or, you know, they, they, they're kind of launched into the world and that's it. You know, they're, they're really not going to take much notice. And you mentioned how Srila Prabhupada also had uh, uh, difficulties with his family. Um, and if he could not manage it, then uh, what chance do we have? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to comment too much on Prabhupada's household life but just I mean I'll say something but I just want to say one thing about myself what I've noticed um, over the years uh, my, my children now they're all grown up as you probably know most of you that they're married um, my eldest son and daughter are both married uh, and my youngest daughter is kind of she's living at home on and off you know 
but she's 20, 24, so they're all grown up. Um, and yes, we did try to train them and teach them. Uh, and uh, we did programs in the house uh, and we tried to involve them as you do, you know, we tried all kinds of things to encourage them, to coach them, to cajole them, you know, <laughs> short of like we, we, we didn't force because Prabhupada very emphatically said you must not force. So it's a, it's a case of using all your skills in leadership and everything to try and um, encourage and get them to to get involved you know and, and sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not it depends every child is different have their own karma and destiny uh, but the one thing i want to say is that i've noticed that it was more the example that my wife and i set than what we tried to show them or, or tried to teach them and tried to tell them um of course we did tell them you will weren't you obviously what's right what's wrong you have to do that but in the end of the day they'll do what you do not what you say so you know with this point has come up that we have to set the example uh, and be ourselves exemplars you know if, if we're not getting up and chanting our rounds uh, and doing the morning program um, and you know reading Prabhupada's books how can we expect our kids to do that they're never going to do it you know it, it's like they'll, they'll, they'll follow your example so so be the you know the example be the change that you want to see in them uh, actually uh, then that's, you know, that's very key to, um, to being able to impart this to them. I just wanted to make that point um, because uh, there's some other things I wanted to say about it as well in the, in the slides coming up. Um, does anyone have anything else? Any points they'd like to make on this? Uh, is that Bishal again, Prabhuji? <laughs> yes, Prabhuji. No problem. Uh uh, so from here it says the duty of a superior is to give fearlessness. So um, yeah, as a grahasta, there can be loads of fear around economic responsibilities. You know about you know um, trying to reach uh, a higher standard and uh, obtaining a higher taste. So I think the, for me, the opposite of fearlessness is faith. Mm. And as we develop in Krishna consciousness, the more faith we have, the less, the more fearless we become. So um, and that that way we can take. You know, we can take charge of, mm. of the ashram, you know, and, and try to elevate everyone else in the, in the ashram as, as in, in the ashram in the family as well. Thank you. Yes, you're saying that um, we have to give fearlessness. It says the duty of the superior to give fearlessness to the subordinate. So um, and you're saying that the opposite, the you know, what is the antithesis of fear? There's a lot of fear in householder life because there's anxiety. I think you're saying about earning a livelihood and you know, surviving, especially in this day and age, um, it's very difficult. So there's a certain amount of stress there and anxiety, but faith is the opposite of that. And if we have good, strong faith, then that counters that, that, that you know, helps us to be peaceful. Um, and so uh, that's the key thing that we must cultivate in our spiritual life. Of course, the whole process of spiritual life is developing our faith from Shraddha to Prema. So Yes, I completely agree with that, Prabhu. Let's have a look at the next one. Marit, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, please go ahead. I'm uh, sorry if I missed you. Who's that? It's okay. It's uh, Kamakshi Devdasi from Coventry. Accept my humble obeisances, Prabhu. Uh, yes, uh, uh, last speaker who said about faith, I think it's the anchor because We've been in Krishna consciousness for over 30 years, and uh, I was the slow one. I was always like a turtle. Uh, working full time and all the rest of it. I don't want to give excuses, but that was the case. But Prabhupada's books were potent, potency that really uh, got my children into Krishna consciousness. And I'm so proud of Prabhupada's books that nothing can replace it. Thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, you're saying how um, over the years, as you've been 30 years practicing. Well done. That's very, very good. Um, and um, you, you felt yourself to be the slow one, uh, always uh, like, you know, trying to um, keep up. But uh, Prabhupada's books have been your saving grace. That's uh, right. Yes. You wanted to make that point. Yes. Thank you. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I've moved to another slide. This is, uh, again, Prabhupada's emphasizing um, that, you know, the husband must take that, that duty seriously. Uh, whether he likes it or not, you know, marriage between husband and wife means husband must be forever responsible. And it doesn't mean that now we have some agreement uh, and then we 
as soon as there's a problem, you know, I, I immediately flee the scene and become so-called renounced. This is a really interesting point that it's not that, you know, renunciation uh, when in the mode of passion means I give something up because it's troublesome uh, and I don't like doing it. And then on the pretext of spiritual life, oh, I'm going to Vrindavan, you know, gonna, <laughs> I might have had enough of this. It's just an impediment to my spiritual life. It's just an anchor around my 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 leg, you know, it's a, it's a weight. I don't need it. Uh, that's actually so-called renunciation that you run away from your responsibility. So Prabhupada is saying, don't do that. You know, you, you've taken a responsibility. This is your wife. Now you, you have to look after her for the rest of the life. Uh, and the wife serves him as well under all circumstances. So this is a really important point. And it actually brings us to the next one, which is this. What is the wife's duty? Um, uh, we've discussed the husband a bit and um, not so much directly what the wife's duty is. Any, any thoughts on this? Here's a clue. You recognize them? Kardama and Devahuti. Hare Krishna Prabhu, this is Samantha. Who's that? Sorry? Samantha. Oh, hi, Bob. Yeah, please uh, speak. Go ahead. Yes. So I think the wife's responsibility be uh, empowering the husband with positive words, lovely words, trying to feel him, make him feel uh, strong and that he's responsible of the household. Like, yeah, empower him and also follow him whatever activity he does, positive activity, like go go with it for example when um, uh, Lord Ram went to the forest like uh, Sita Devi was ready to give up every luxury or everything every comfort like, every comfort so he was uh, she was ready to go with him wherever he was because that was her duty to to share the fortune of, of her husband. Thank you very much uh, what was your name again? Samantha. Samantha, yes, thank you, Samantha. That's a, yes, you've understood a very important point of the uh, philosophy. Thank you. That, that the, the, um, you gave the example of Lord Ram and uh, Sita and, and how she was prepared to forego um, all comforts and everything to stay with her husband. You, you know, you're saying that the wife must, um, you know, to go with the husband and, and undergo the same austerity as him like uh, Sita did. And, and the, the wife has to be um, encouraging and supporting uh, toward the husband in, in whatever he does, in the positive activities that he carries out, you know. So she's there to help him all the time, like the Dharma Patni, uh, as they say. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, that, that's, that's a really nice point. Um, I think we've got one. Um, Parveen said to serve her husband and Kiran to anchor the family, be the bedrock. Yep, these are all um, really important points. Uh, but let's just um, pick up on that one that Samantha just said, because, um, wait a minute, we've got one more person. Of, uh, be careful of her desire. So I think by that, uh, Ravity, you mean, um, you know, to look after her, to make sure that, um, you know, you're taking good care of her, to give her what she, what she wants, what she needs. Uh, or be Hi, careful. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi. Yeah, I was just thinking more like being careful of having too many desires and then putting okay. that pressure on the husband to fulfill them all. Okay, so that yes. they become a distraction from kind of your spiritual goals. Okay, yes, yes. I, actually, I wondered if you, you meant that. Yeah, you're saying not to be um, carried away that the, the wife may have uh, more material desires, like, oh, we must get a better house or we need more yeah. money. Or um material things like that yes okay that's a good point and um of course uh yes that 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 is the duty of the husband to ensure that the wife is feeling peaceful and satisfied uh and and doesn't have that um you know uh it coming even the man can have that problem there's many men are like that oh i must get a better job i'm not earning enough you know it's like i i must improve uh get a better car the latest model all the time and you know whatever um, so that that comes out of obviously that comes out of um, weakness, spiritual weakness. So um, I, I always say that we should not 
that um, that you know, okay, householder means that we have to work and earn money and everything, but not at the cost of our spiritual life. You know, an over endeavor. There's such a thing as uh, near Magrahav, over endeavor in spiritual life, and for me, that means um, allowing your, your material needs to, um, you know, overcome your spiritual practices to prevent yourself from being able to practice spiritual life. So uh, prioritize that all the time. Make sure that that is top of the list. Um, support, complement, correct, and act. Be a good team member in the journey. May have to become a leader if needed. So this is um, Raj Lakshmi, uh, the wife's position in the family. So these are all good points. Um, so this is from the seventh canto. To render service to the husband, to be always favorably disposed, disposed toward the husband, to be equally well disposed toward the husband's relatives and friends, to follow the vows of the husband. These are the four principles to be followed by women described as chaste. And Prabhupada comments, it is very important for peaceful householder life that a woman follow the vow of her husband. Any disagreement with the husband's vow will disrupt family life. So yeah, follow the vow. What does that mean? That, that's, um, if any of you want to say anything anytime, please feel free because uh, we're kind of running out of time here. So I'm just going to press on. I've got a few, few more slides. But uh, yeah, just put your hand up or shout out if there's anything you want to say or drop a note. Uh, so um, as, as was already uh, just said um, by Samantha, how the, the wife will follow the vow in the sense like um, Sita did. That, that's a wonderful example. Um, I, I heard a class where Srila Prabhupada was saying how um, in, in his young life, you know, 1934, he said, 1935, something like that. Um, there's, a, there's a lecture, by the way, this is called The Psychology of Chastity that Prabhupada gave this lecture, I think, in London in 73 it's worth listening to um and in that lecture he, he spoke about a man he saw he was a beggar and he was blind he'd had some accident and his face was disfigured and he couldn't see uh, and he was just sitting on the roadside begging and he saw that next to him was his wife you know his wife hadn't left him and, she, and and he looked at the beggar and the man was said he was neat and clean his clothes were washed everything was nice you know and, and she brought some little lunch for him there. She was looking after him. Even though he was in that state, he'd become ugly and horrible uh, looking, you know. <laughs> um, but she carried on serving him under those circumstances. So um, Prabhupada gave that example. It's a wonderful example. So following the vow, you know, sometimes um, the man wants to, you know, um, do something. The woman doesn't like it. Um, in, in, you know, in my family life, uh, we've encountered that kind of situation once or twice. And, uh, <laughs> um, but ultimately, uh, the wife has to accept the, the husband's view. Uh, I don't think that means the man should be like a, a brutal dictator. And that it's my way or the highway. You know, that obviously, there can be some, um, you know, some discussion around these things. But ultimately, uh, it's, it's the man who has to be the leader. This is the the dynamic um, that has to be followed. Prabhupada says, the wife must see the tendencies of the husband and must be prepared to follow him. The word samanuvrata indicates that it is the duty of a wife to adopt the special circumstances in which the husband is situated. Of course, if the husband is as great as Kardama Muni, then a very good result accrues from following him. But even if the husband is not a great devotee, like Kardama Muni, it is the wife's duty to adapt herself according to his mentality. That makes married life very happy. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to comment on any of these things, uh, that's, that's great. Um, what you understand here. Uh, are all the ladies happy with this? Are there any wives who find this uh, un, un, unacceptable or uh, difficult. Note here that Prabhupada says, even if the husband is not a great devotee, so it's not an excuse to say my husband's not, you know, on the level of uh, Kardama Muni or something like that. So, you know, I, I don't have to follow him. 
as long as he's i mean there are circumstances where the husband and the, where the wife might consider the husband's no longer fit to be followed and that's there in scripture but um that's you know he has to become uh, i i you know very fallen and irreconcilable irreconcilably so um it seems you know before they should stick together ultimately husband and wife under any condition really this is the you know the primary thing that uh, one should attempt and that makes married life very happy when the wife adopts to the special circumstances of the husband that leads to happiness it's not the other way around you know if you try to take over if you reverse the roles then you, you know you won't be happy you won't be peaceful so it's very important that this is uh, observed as much as one can do. And Deva Huti is the example. Sorry, did someone want to speak there? Hare Krishna Prabhu. I just want to um, just uh, explain what I wrote on the chat. I, I said the taking lead position, lead sometimes. The reason I said that is that I know of some devotees and some of my friends where the husbands were very materialistic but the wives were uh, wives had a very spiritual bent of mind and in those situations i'm very happy to say that now both husband and wife are into it because primarily the wife took the lead and uh, slowly in whatever way in a not um, in a bossy way but in a very humble and a nice in a serving um, in a serving mood they took the lead in the spiritual path and now so the, the couples and the friends that I'm talking about, the both husband and wife are into spiritual path. So I think sometimes they may have to take a lead if it is the right thing to do the, for the family. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, you're saying you, you know of some examples where um, the wife took the lead spiritually because the husband was more materialistic. Yes. Uh, mm, but the, 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 um, the wife did that in a in a very humble and submissive and nice way gentle way um and it actually had a positive effect and it, it the husband changed and actually took more became more spiritual himself as a result of that so that can happen as well yes Prabhu. thank you yes that's good thank you you know what they say crazy ways for crazy days <laughs> sometimes these things and uh, may have to happen you're right yes um and uh, yes, I, I did some uh, w women I know have married uh, non-devotee husbands, kind of hard to find uh, good husbands and wives these days sometimes. And um, and that is what's going on. Yes, they are gradually bringing their husbands, making them, you know, become more like devotees. So, but for the most part, you know, the general principle is this given here that, you know, if the two devotees are married together, somehow the wife must be able to you know, convey to the husband that she sees him in that light as the leader, as the, you know, the person in, in charge of that relationship. This is an important psychology between man and woman. Um, so, Partha, uh, probably if wife and husband have the same spiritual master or advisor, will that do some help? Okay. Yeah, so if, if they're both... Um, initiated by the same person um that would probably help yes in this much as <laughs> less likely to be conflict if they've both got a different spiritual master <laughs> um i i want to move on to talk a bit about the practical steps we can take because um you know that, that's the next point really what practical steps can we take to ensure marital harmony and progress um because uh, I, you know for me i think it's very important that um and avoid this. Can you see that? That's a dark well. <laughs> you often hear about married life, that it's like a dark, blind well that you fall into. So we want to avoid that. So yeah, the practical steps we can take, um, for me, are about keeping Srila Prabhupada in the center. Okay, different spiritual masters are there, and I understand that, and that's fine. Um, but you know it, it, I, still the the what we all where we all sort of come together the the central point around which we're all revolving is Prabhupada's instructions um and his books so um on the basis of his books uh we can forge unity amongst ourselves 
on the level of families, on the level of community groups, on the level of temples, on every level, on the level of ISKCON as a whole. The GVC are trying to do that to make Prabhupada the foundational Shiksha Guru um, of everyone. So um, here is Srila Prabhupada's instructions in the Bhagavad Gita. The best process for making the home pleasant is Krishna consciousness. If one is in full Krishna consciousness, he can make his home very happy because this process of Krishna consciousness is very easy. One need only chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Accept the remnants of foodstuff offered to Krishna. Have some discussion on books like the Gita and Bhagavatam and engage oneself in deity worship. These four things will make one happy. One should train the members of his family in this way. So this is a practical program. We've had the duty of a husband, the duty of a wife, but this is where they come together. And this is where the duties uh, coalesce and, you know, to, and this is the mutual cooperation. I understand that Prabhupada was speaking about in the beginning. Um, and I think this is the foundation, the basis by which our marriages will succeed. Um, that we have this daily practice in the home. Uh, myself and my wife, you know, right from the, the very beginning, well, more or less, um, I was a temple president in Manchester and my wife uh, was working with me. We were going to the temple together for some years and then my first child, Madhva, was born. Um, and we, she kept coming to the temple, bringing him in the little carry cot. Um, and then my second child was born, Radhika. And then it became very difficult, so she couldn't do that. And she got stuck at home. And I was still going to the temple, doing the program, and she was beginning to struggle um, because she didn't have any sadness. So then I, I started to do a program at home um, with, uh, with my wife and gradually the children as they got bigger. Uh, and, you know, we would do it each day. And we've done since then, every single day, we get up, uh, in, you know, we're together, we do, we turn our rounds together. We do the whole morning program, we go through all the prayers together, we worship the deity. And we have a, in the morning, a Bhagavatam discussion, half an hour. And in the evening, a Gita discussion, we do the evening program. And then we do a Gita discussion together every single day. So, um, and we do a little kirtan, of course, uh, and we take prasadam. That's the easy one. <laughs> and of course, the, all four things are there. So these four things are, are really uh, significant and important. And, and, uh, and it was doing these things, I think, that you know, more influenced our children than anything else. And now, as they get older, we see that they're starting to take this up, although they resisted us telling them, this is what you should do. You know, they, they say, yeah, sure, you know, well, yeah, no, that's, that's, you know, but they didn't do it. But then, you know, gradually I see now as they get their own families, their own homes, that they're starting to do this, you know, and they're realizing that they have to be the right example for their children, too. So, so these are the things that Prabhupada says that uh, are required in, in family life. And I think this is, um, you know, the answer to... Um, everything really you know to becoming peaceful to not becoming overcome by material desires either man or wife um and uh, generally making progress in spiritual life we've only got five minutes so i'm going to just see if anyone has any questions or any points they'd like to make before we kind of end Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Prabhu, I just wanted to also mention something that um, I heard from a senior devotee. Devaki Maitaji was saying when she was to Birmingham that um, she, she said to us that if there's no discussion of the scriptures in any ashram, that's not an ashram. Mm. That's what she said. Yeah, that's a nice point. You're saying Devaki uh, Maitaji pointed out that we must discuss scriptures, otherwise it does, it's not an ashram. Yeah, that, I think that that's why I've highlighted it. You can see there, um, because that, that's the one that tends to fall off and, you know, get neglected 
that we don't do that. Um, a lot of families, you know, doing kirtan together, taking prasadam together, and often the deity worship is, you know, there. But actually discussing Gita and Bhagavatam, it's like a car with only three wheels. If you don't do that, you know, it's not going to run very well. So you have to have that fourth wheel to, you know, to, uh, to, to, for the whole thing to really work. Because it's important, you know, we need to connect with the philosophy. Um, uh, we forget even the most basic points if we don't keep connecting with it, keep hearing, hearing. Hearing is so important. Shravanam, it's the first thing. And it's not that, well, I've done Shravanam, now I can move on to Kirtanam and, you know, Smaranam and everything else. It stays there. It's the foundation. Shravanam, we build on that. We build, you know, one thing on the other. Um, so Shravanam is, is critical to our progress constantly we need that and when we're hearing we're you know we're we're, we're connecting we're not we're remembering um the key points of the philosophy that happiness doesn't come from externals uh, as, as a household we've got to understand that that it's not the externals it's not that you know uh, the, even the husband wife relationship okay there should be some um you know that you must be a compatible and happy together but it's not that's where your happiness is not going to come from there ultimately your happiness must come from krishna consciousness um from internal cultivation of spiritual life you know it's not that any kind of external thing can ever make us happy so we need to be reminded of that constantly so that we don't lose our direction lose our focus you know, because if we're thinking I can find happiness externally, then as soon as the external things are not making us happy, oh, I have to change them. I need to make an adjustment, you know, and that's when we we leave our partner uh, and try to find happiness somewhere else. But we, then we're forgetting, well, you're going to take your forehead with you. If you were suffering in that situation, what makes you think you're not going to suffer in the other one? You know, <laughs> this is your destiny. You may suffer worse because now you've committed a sinful activity. Um, so you're only going to make things worse. So these are important points. Um, I just want to show you this, um, which I have got here. This is the, uh, oh, yeah, this is Prabhupada. So why don't you become a real guru to your wife, to your children, and instruct the Gita as it is. And this is our mission. You sit down in the evening, chant the Hare Krishna mantra, teach a little instruction. From the Gita. See how the life changes. Is that a very difficult task? Yeah. So, yeah, being the guru doesn't mean I, I sit back and I take all kinds of service and, you know, you cook for me and massage my feet. Um, yeah, that's okay. But be the guru, be a real guru and actually guide and free your wife, free your children from fearfulness, liberate them. So this is, I just put this up here um, for your reference that uh, there's a website we've got. I've been trying to um, model some of the, um, the the discussion methods, techniques that we've learned from Srila Prabhupada. Everything is from him. Uh, so you can look at that website uh, for yourselves and um, you'll find some useful tips there. And also there's a Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Uh, which is about um, how to discuss Shastra. So I can we reach the end, but does anyone have any last points or questions or anything that they'd like to say? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I, I don't have a question, but I'd just like to say a very big thank you to yourself for, for giving this class. I really enjoyed it. Very practical. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Lovely class. Very, very important topic. As Thank you can you. see, plenty of questions uh, because, uh, especially Sunday Family Sangha, it is for families, and that's the you know the household comes from the family, uh, the word family. So it's, it's a very important topic for this occasion. So thank you so much. You know, I think you chose a very good uh, discussion there. Thank and you very nicely explained. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and uh, yes, we're so fortunate to have you today, and uh, I hope we can get your association. <laughs> very yes. soon okay thank you Ruby. i look forward to seeing you all again and hearing from you